agents, removed the ships of Columbus from the sea, and half the world lost to the monsters of the unknown. Erase Marco Polo from the pages of history, and the Far East moves out of the knowledge of Western men. The clock back. Know the civilization before Caesar and your total world Mediterranean. Here, culture raised its monuments. Here, religion and philosophy, science and art, cowering shadows across all the centuries to come. Here, today, may walk the highway of history. Listen to the voices of the past. Know, today, the heritage of all your yesterdays. Airborne, only 20 hours behind you, the North American continent. Your transportation, pity constellation, master of weather and sky, of space and time, willing servant of the air-minded travelers of today. You fly in comfort, in luxury, with courteous service. Your host, Transworld Airlines, opening new vistas, crossing new frontiers. TWA and the skill of trained men and women as they carry you on flight into time. Lisbon, Portugal. Feet and find yourself deep in the past. On a hill overlooking the modern city, a fortress successively held by the Romans, the Goths, and the Moors. Grim relic of men who came and conquered and were overthrown in turn, as is a way with conquerors. Pass back into the city, another street, and the Geronimos Monastery, founded in 1499 to commemorate the discovery of the sea route to India by Vasco da Gama. A steep incline, a rural road. And you join the people of Portugal in traditional heart. Once the matadors were run gladiators, and the bull was a starving, maddened lion. Their only weapons are their capes and their grace. And in Portugal, bull is never killed. Then the novitiates pan in a pagan, painful, funny ritual that goes back into time. Another road, another day. You are down at the sea coast. The sailors of today live and work in a great seafaring tradition. Columbus sailed into this harbor on his way back from the discovery of a new world. It is easy to imagine that life has not changed much in four or five hundred years. In those days, the men brought in their catches from the sea, the fishwives wet their cloths in the waters of the Tagus and carried the fish to market, just as they do today. The women worked with the men. The machinery of the port was arms and heads and aching backs. And the people were their own beasts of burden. The rope walkers might be twisting the strands which raised the sails of the Santa Maria. As you stand before the Tower of Bellum, raised to commemorate the great discoveries, you can almost believe that you hear the voice of Columbus reading from the pages of Seneca, the Roman. Centuries will come when the ocean bursts the bonds with which it encloses us. 
when any measurable land will lie open and the steersman will discover new worlds. Portugal is behind. Ahead lies Spain. And the words of Seneca renew their meaning as the modern steersman guides your plane across the sky. Below, Madrid. Capital of Spain, established at the very center of the Iberian Peninsula. One more terminal on TWA's far-flung system. Even the inland cities of the Mediterranean become ports of call for the ships of Transworld Airlines. All history passes this way. In the third century, the Romans built an aqueduct. It still carries water to Segovia. 300 years later, the Visigoths built their twisted streets. 800 years ago, the Knights Templar put their arms at the service of king and pope. Then, late in the 15th century, the great queen appeared. Listen. I, Isabella, having supported the voyage of Admiral Columbus and having pawned my jewels to defray the expenses of it, do decree the riches which shall be returned to us shall be largely expended on the erection of great universities of learning and of great cathedrals of worship. Thus shall the jewels of Isabella become the jewels of Spain. We are at Granada at the Feast of Corpus Christi. The festival was established in 1264 by Pope Urban IV and the procession of the host by Pope John XXII. It is said that the altar carried in this procession is made of the silver brought from America by Columbus. Today and yesterday become one as we travel through the pages of the past. We leave Spain and take the road to Rome, two hours from Madrid. Rome, the city of the Caesars. The constellation lands. With comfort, convenience, speed, you are in Rome. For some, the excitement of new old places. For others, Italy may mean home. For all, the courtesy and efficiency of Transworld Airline as the travelers move on their way. In Rome, you find yourself at the end of one era and the beginning of another. The time that is gone has carved its story in the bas-reliefs of Rome's ruins. Over many avenues are thrown the imposing triumphal arches, architecture of a civilization grown weary. As the descent into oblivion grows more steep, the figures grow more heroic, the arches more ornate. But it is in the deathly quiet of the Colosseum that the end of an age can best be sensed. The arched tears are like sightless eyes now. Where lance and net fought sword and armor, the floor has fallen away. No longer are the entrances thronged with the elite of Rome. The slaves have left the galleries. Caesar is dead. The senators are ghosts. The vestal virgins have left their podium. Their snowy handkerchiefs no longer salute a victor. Over all, there rises the whispered rumor of a new faith, a new religion, and the end of an era marks the beginning of a new age. It is 1667, 
the Pope Alexander VII and his architect Bernini speak. The task is completed, Holy Father. Michelangelo's dome floats over St. Peter's tomb. The blessed Jesus, surrounded by his saints, carries the cross through all eternity. The plans laid down by Bramante in 1505 have come to fruition. An hundred and sixty-two years to build St. Peter's, Benini. May the good God grant that it will lift men's hearts to heaven in the centuries to come. May your curving colonnades be as Christ opening his arms to the faithful and to those who hunger for faith. It will be so. The Piazza San Pietro robe children of the Lord going about the Lord's business. Among our travelers, there is one who is going home, and he can best speak for himself. I have been away in America for, well, too many years. My friends will welcome me back. I'll see my sister and her bambino. Her husband will be a little shy with me at first. We'll climb the hill to visit Mama. I can smell the grapes. And the animals will greet me. I'll cross myself again before the martyred Jesus. And all the family will go with me to town. Will the carriages still be there? And the little girls, sweet and white, on their way to their first communion. Will the fruit be ripe? Will the sad songs of the guitar still sing at the cafe? I bet five dollars I think I see a girl I loved once and then discover my girls had a daughter. Ah, oh, time passes so fast. I'm going down to Venice. Ride in a gondola. I might even have company. What do you know? For 20 years, all that time in America, I wanted to ride in a gondola on the canals of Venice. And now, it will happen. again. It's a shame. You stay away so long, you forget how clear and blue, how beautiful the Mediterranean can be. Behind today and yesterday in Portugal and Spain and Italy. Ahead through the mists of antiquity, the glory that was Greece. The year is 440 B.C. 
Standing on the Acropolis are the architects of Greek thought and culture and of our own. Near the porch of the maidens stand Pericles, the ruler, and Sophocles, the poet. Euripides plans a new drama, and Aristophanes a comedy. Phidias, the sculptor, scans the building which is to house his work. While on the steps of the Parthenon, Socrates heckles the workmen. These men will live as long as people remember. Out over the Mediterranean, while your TWA navigator computes your course over the trade routes of 4,000 years to the east. And your radio operator heralds your arrival at Cairo. From Cairo, the traveler may venture again into the past, into the lands of the Near East, into the Holy Land, into Bethlehem. St. Luke writes, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. On the road to Egypt, the people, the families pass, driving their animals before them. So might Joseph and his family fleeing before the swords of Herod's soldiers. Nazareth, home of Mary and Joseph and the child. At Mary's well, the women gather to gossip and to fetch water, and the child Jesus grows in strength and wisdom. On the rush-covered banks of the River Jordan, Jesus comes to be baptized by John. Here, the Spirit of God descends like a dove upon him. At the Sea of Galilee, he gains two disciples. St. Matthew tells that story. Jesus saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. At Capernaum, a centurion builds a walled garden and a temple in gratitude for the healing of his servant. Speak the word only, the centurion said, and my servant shall be healed. And Jesus answered, As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. A narrow walled road still leads down into Jerusalem and flowers grow again in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus said, Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Thirteen hundred years later, the Crusaders moved into the loneliness of the great plains of Syria. On a towering height, they built one of many castles, base for a war against the Saracens. Weary leagues from home, years away from families and friends, they dreamed of glory and found themselves considered infidels in the land of the Muslims. Their dreams vanished. Rust pocked their swords. Only the pages of history and the cold stones of their castle 
record the men who once passed this way. The desert in the 900th year of the Hegira. Come and enjoy the company of coffee in the places of its habitation. For the divine goodness envelops those who partake of its feast. Roast them, my son, just sufficient on an open fire until the green beans turn the color of the earth. Crush them carefully in your mortar, for coffee is the stream in which we waste away our sorrows. Think of it confidently and give not ear to the speech of the foolish who condemn without reason. For even enemies may partake of the beverage of the children of God together and part friends. You are back in Egypt, exotic land of the Nile and of Cleopatra. You visit the pyramids, old to history, but new to you. Within the mazes of this vastness, a king was buried in a secret tomb. All who labored his were slain to keep that secret. Your fabled ship of the desert waits while you explore and wonder a little about these man-made tombs. You gaze on the Sphinx, and in your ears you hear the voice of a bargeman of the Nile, as he might have spoken in 42 B.C. Egypt lives on the Nile. In the good years, the river rises and floods far back from her banks. Then, when she ebbs, a blanket of rich soil is left behind. The plow opens the earth like a prow cutting through water. The seedsman scatters the grain, and shortly we come to harvest. We live on the Nile. She bears my ship on her bosom like a mother carrying a child. The sails are belly full with her winds. Her banks are rich with ships. The cargoes of cheese and cotton and wheat fill the holds as we go down to Cairo. We promise to meet at the Golden Cave and part to transact our business. There is much to sell here, much to buy, much to barter, money to make, and fine things to do with it. We have the Nile and Cleopatra for our queen. One day our barges passed on the Nile, and she smiled at me. You lunch on the terrace of Shepherd's Hotel in Cairo. On the list of all travelers who have wined and dined around the world, Shepherd's at Cairo is marked high. This is your time. Alexandria. You travel up country, and your excitement mounts as you once again near the sea. Alexandria, fabulous, beautiful seacoast city of the Mediterranean.
the breeze sweeps in from the sea, and you make your way to one of the most renowned beaches in the world. But first, you've time for a drink before your swim. Then you plunge into the Mediterranean, a sea which bathed the feet of the gods and provided its people with a highway of history. The highway over past on your TWA flight into time.